It's not enough to make a communication system powerful, sophisticated, reliable, and secure. If the system is to do the job, it must be structured to fit the job as well, however demanding or varied that job may be. Today's tactical communication systems are not doing the job, and here's why. Communications architecture has not kept pace with the very high level of technology that is being used to perform tactical missions. High-performance aircraft, airborne weaponry, missiles, surveillance capabilities, data processing and display capabilities to support decision-making, and ground and airborne command and control elements are all of high-performance potential, the best the state-of-the-art can provide. Each element knows where it is and what its capabilities or problems are, but it may not know enough about the situation to do its job. It may not be able to obtain authorization to change its mission when on-scene priorities change. It may not be able to get the kind of help it needs. To do so, these elements must have effective intercommunication. No such communication exists today. The tactical elements all too often do not mesh in real time. This inability to distribute information effectively is the major impediment to accomplishing today's tactical missions. In order to bring total tactical power to bear on tactical Air Force objectives, a total communications capability is needed, which can distribute, coordinate, manage, and control data in real time. Such a capability simply does not exist today. And here's the effect of this lack on today's missions. Missile firings are aborted because of fear of hitting friendly forces whose locations aren't known due to lack of reliable surveillance information. Ordnance has to be returned or jettisoned despite the existence of high priority targets. Even though we have first-rate air-sea rescue forces, many downed pilots are lost because pickups can't be accomplished quickly enough. Aircraft are shot down because information on MiGs and SAMs is unavailable to them even though other elements of our forces may have this information. It's difficult to coordinate operations because commanders can't be sure where their aircraft are. Unexpected opportunities slip by too quickly for our replanning processes to take advantage of them. Tactical operations have achieved their effectiveness against high odds using a communication system that is not structured to meet their needs. Communications take place over point-to-point -point links or among subscribers within small nets, such as a flight of aircraft. There is no general availability of critical data. Messages must travel through the tactical air control system in series. Therefore, decisions are necessarily based on fragmentary information, on a partial picture of the tactical situation. Coordination is difficult, lengthy. It's hard to be sure that every element that should be given a piece of information has actually received it, or that the information hasn't been distorted in transfer. And lost information means lost time, lost opportunities, and lost lives. One of the keys to solving these problems is communications. The complexity of tactical command and control has outrun the capability of present-day communication systems. If the enemy, the weather, the terrain don't cooperate, if we are forced to change our intricate daily tactical plan, the system can't cope. Mistakes are made. Individually excellent capabilities stall and cannot be applied effectively. We have reached the point of diminishing returns from our present point-to-point -point communication system, which moves information from one cubbyhole to another, one message at a time. Its structure gets in its own way, actually preventing the kind of integrated operations our tactical elements are designed to conduct. The point is this. The tactical communications job simply cannot be done over the kind of point-to-point -point links and limited net it depends on today. Command and control are awkward. Navigation and position location are vague. Friend-foe identification is a headache. And too often, the information doesn't reach the right place at the right time if indeed it gets there at all. A new kind of communication structure is needed, one which can tie together our highly developed weaponry and command and control capabilities and weld tactical air into an even more effective fighting force. The Pluracta concept is designed to provide a better architecture, not cubby holes, but a coherent structure capable of integrating a fighting force in real time. A broadcast structure, 
Now, in the development stage, Paracta already shows potential for a dramatic increase in tactical effectiveness through improved communications. The acronym Pleracta stands for Position Location, Reporting and Control of Tactical Aircraft. The Pleracta system is now being developed by the Electronic Systems Division of the Air Force Systems Command with the aid of the MITRE Corporation. Pleracta creates a dynamic pool of information available to all authorized elements of the tactical air control system immediately and at the same time. Situation and status messages enter the network automatically from each element and are continuously and rapidly updated. The information within the system as a whole becomes a resource on which any authorized participant may draw, extracting what he needs and passing up the rest. The result is an up-to-the-minute source of all known information about the tactical situation, which provides a basis for key activities such as on-the-spot planning, replanning, and dynamic management of tactical resources. Pleracta is being designed to provide routine information exchange among up to 1,000 air and ground elements of a tactical air control system over an area approximately 600 miles in diameter. The process begins with the automatic collection of routine data from deployed units. Data such as aircraft position, velocity, ordnance, fuel status, aircraft type, aircraft emergency, and mission information. This information is digitally transmitted into the Pleracta information pool in individual time slots, which recur for each unit. The capacity of the system will permit as many as a thousand units to report every 10 seconds. And reporting rates can easily be varied simply by changing the element's time slot allocation. The system is synchronized using simple crystal oscillators as the basis for system clocks which are periodically updated to synchronize them with the designated master station. These provide a highly accurate time standard throughout the Pleracta network. Users throughout the system will automatically select information they need by means of receiver codes which filter for appropriate data and display it on screens in the cockpit or at ground elements, providing a comprehensive, rapidly updated picture of the tactical situation. The Pleracta system may also be used to transmit commands and acknowledgments to and from any elements in the system. In addition, since continually updated information is available to all participants, any Pleracta element can take over the system command and control function, providing continuity without loss of information or the necessity of restructuring the system. So that if an individual station fails or is knocked out, Pleracta's command and control structure will be highly survivable. And with a spread spectrum signal structure, Pleracta will be both secure and highly jam resistant. Because of the system's precise timing, security is relatively easy and inexpensive to maintain, and anti-jam protection is facilitated. Pleracta is designed to integrate effectively with any of the discrete navigation systems planned by the Air Force. But in case of need, Pleracta can also be used for navigation based on standardized system time and the single channel broadcast communication structure. It works this way. Each message arriving at a Pleracta equipped unit provides information as a basis for determining the range to the message's originator. The unit's Pleracta computer makes a recurring series of range measurements based on the positions transmitted by the other stations and on the time of arrival of their signals, whereupon it corrects its own knowledge of time dynamically calculates its own position with respect to the other units and feeds its own position and status report into the net. The result of this continuous, simultaneous process is a knowledge of time, position, and heading with respect to the system, which acts as a common navigational grid. Aircraft not equipped with Pleracta can be monitored by surveillance radar and their identification confirmed as friendlies. The surveillance element automatically enters this identification into the net, where it becomes part of the overall situation display. Not only friendly, but enemy position, status, and identity can be entered into the net. Surveillance reports go into the information pool, where they become part of the situation display for control and coordination of combat operations. And since this, as well as all other situation information, is available to all force elements on a real-time basis, Targets can be identified soon enough 
for rapid, confident action to be taken. Fluracta is simplified, consolidated, and economical. It's an area-wide broadcast system which, for the first time, provides a communication structure which can tackle the complexity of modern tactical missions. Communications, position location, and friend-foe identification, the building blocks of tactical air control, are the building blocks of Pluracta II. Pluracta will help mesh individual tactical capabilities into an integrated fighting force capable of rapid, accurate, flexible operation. It will do so by putting information in the hands of those who need it, when they need it. At the MITRE Corporation, an experimental Pluracta system is being developed and tested. It has already demonstrated its ability to meet the major program objectives, as the following exercise will show. At the Pluracta Master Station, a time division terminal is co-located with a monitor control and simulation facility. There are stationary terminals at nearby Boston Hill and Millstone Hill, and three mobile terminals. A two and a half ton truck situated today on Cambridge Hill near Pelham, New Hampshire, and two C-131 aircraft. The equipment used to demonstrate Pluracta is off the shelf chosen for economy to validate the capability that will be provided later with far smaller, more compact, advanced operational hardware. The Pluracta demonstration terminal itself consists of an AN-APX25 transponder modified to act as an L-band transceiver, a MITRE-built control and display unit which allows data processing entry and displays net information in decimal form on the register at the top of the unit an IBM 4Pi computer as data processor, plus a crystal oscillator used as the system timing device, additional logic, and a small power supply. Antennas for all units are omnidirectional, supporting Pluracta's broadcast mode of operations. The monitor control and simulation facility controls the Pluracta communications network. It also performs many other important tasks, including on and offline data recording, data reduction, and post-mission analysis. It includes two PDP-8 computers used for Pluracta programming, a teletype used as one of the inputs to the experimental system, and a cathode ray tube display, which allows the operators to monitor Pluracta operations. At the moment, a Pluracta exercise is underway. In the radio room, the control and display unit, or CDU, is registering the arrival of messages from three different stationary sites. Each site sends one message per second. That's why the display is changing so rapidly. But a recurring pattern can be seen, which shows that this master clock and the site clocks are running at the same rate and reading the same time. Therefore, each message arrives at the same elapsed time within successive time slots. As we lock up on one site, we can see more clearly that within an error limit of 100 nanoseconds, or one ten millionth of a second, the number patterns are constant, cycle after cycle. The system is synchronized. This experimental Pluracta network is demonstrating that a fully synchronous time division multiple access system does work, and it provides the total connectivity required for efficient, effective command and control. Crystal oscillators, mounted in the CDU, are serving as system clocks throughout the Pluracta network. In conjunction with corrections made by the computer program, they provide system elements with common time. Maintenance of this common system of standard time allows for computation and display of the range between elements of the system. The number shown here is the distance between the truck site and Boston Hill, approximately 14 nautical miles. At the monitor control and simulation facility, we see the Pluracta experimental system on the display as now deployed. Each data block represents a site, three of which are fixed. E is the master terminal at Bedford, B is Boston Hill, and M is Millstone Hill. As an indication of the dimensions of this system, the distance from Boston Hill to Millstone Hill is 20 nautical miles. In this experiment, the three fixed sites, Boston Hill, Millstone Hill, and Mitre, serve as the references for the fourth site, the truck at the top, which will attempt to enter the system 
and synchronize its clock with system time. As a result of the synchronization calculations, the truck will also establish its position with respect to other system elements. Standard symbology within the data blocks indicates site position, altitude, and status. The truck is now commanded to enter the system, that is, to come onto the Pluracta communications network. He will begin with a very poor estimate of time with respect to system time, and the computer will perform the calculations necessary to effect synchronization. At the same time, the position of the truck is being calculated. Although the truck does not physically move, the data block moves corresponding to the truck's reported position. The moving data block on the display corresponds to refinements in his synchronization and position calculations. The UU characters show he knows neither his time nor position with respect to the system. Based on successive measurements of the ranges to the fixed sites, the clock time in the truck is refined until it's synchronized to system time. Then, as shown on the top line of his data block, the letters S and P come up, indicating that he is synchronized and that his position is established. Net entry has been accomplished. At the same time, the truck has begun automatic position and status reporting. This unit is now a fully functioning member of the Paracta net. When its synchronization and position are sufficiently refined, it becomes a reference site for use by other members of the network. With present position available from the synchronization calculations, navigation information is easily derived as well. For example, Paracta can provide range and bearing to an arbitrarily chosen point. This is important. The point could be, for example, the location of a downed pilot. In this demonstration, the point to which Pluracta will establish range and bearing is the end of the runway at L.G. Hanscom Field in eastern Massachusetts. The Pluracta-equipped test aircraft is heading for an overflight at this point now. Without using any nav aid, Pluracta will give the pilot the range and bearing information necessary to bring him in right over the end of the runway. He is less than one mile out now on a heading of 112 degrees, the CDU clocking him down in increments of 1 20th of a mile. The plotter, CDU, and display screen graphically show the flight pattern as the aircraft nears the runway. Next, Pluracta can be used to send and acknowledge commands, just like any point-to-point -point system. The operator and computer play a question and answer game, the computer asking the questions and the operator answering them. The resulting information is transmitted to the truck as a command to go off the air. We see the results on the display. The terminal zero on the second line of the truck's data block indicates the number of seconds that have elapsed since the last message was received from the truck. The command is received, the number climbs from one through five and turns to a question mark, indicating that the truck is now off the air. An acknowledgement also appears at the bottom of the display. Next, we command the truck to come back on using Pluracta's time slot relay mode. This time, the message is relayed via the Millstone Hill site. If the truck has received the message, his question mark will turn back to a zero, indicating that he has resumed sending and the truck comes back on. Again, an acknowledgement appears at the bottom of the display. A command has been transferred and acknowledged using Pluracta's time slot relay capability. Information as shown can either be broadcast generally or using the system's addressing function may be transmitted between specific stations. And as shown, any unit in the system can become a relay which permits operation beyond line of sight. Next, the system is used to demonstrate synchronization of and position location and reporting from a moving aircraft. This is a tape of one of the recent Pluracta flight tests. For convenience in viewing, we accelerate the tape to 100 times normal speed. The two aircraft are flying in the vicinity of the ground-based triad of stations at approximately 200 knots. Each aircraft is using the positions reported by the other aircraft and the ground stations 
for its synchronization and position calculations. The aircraft is initializing into the system just as the truck did, establishing time and position with respect to the net. The truck itself is the ground mobile station and interacts with two aircraft. As they fly, the aircraft are automatically reporting position and status information. The vector indicates the direction of flight, while the length of the vector shows the aircraft's velocity. In short, Pluracta performs the surveillance function, creating track displays in all elements by receiving messages and converting them into signals portrayed on individual display screens without complex additional surveillance equipment and installations. By correlating and presenting complete surveillance information, Pluracta eliminates the need for center tracking and operator track maintenance, and thus permits the surveillance system to track aircraft at far greater capacities. In the coming phase of the Pluracta program, the system will be operated in a quasi-tactical environment, using, among other things, the C-11C jet aircraft trainers shown here and run against a tactical air scenario to demonstrate the system's ability to help the user perform tactical command and control. At the same time, work will continue on simulated elements and on advanced communications techniques to be used in the final system. Meanwhile, advancements in micro-miniaturization and LSI technology, already reaching the production stage, will ultimately lead to advanced equipment for use in fighter aircraft. Eight chips such as this will eventually replace this entire correlator drawer. It is the change in thinking about the way tactical communications should be handled that is the key to Pluracta. Some of the advantages are as follows. It automates a pilot's routine reporting tasks. That means less burden on the pilot and better capability for response. It relieves overloaded voice channels while improving communications capacity by digitizing and automatically transmitting unit status messages. It provides quicker, more reliable, more direct reporting, navigation, and friend foe identification than current systems, besides being a highly effective command net. It is secure, jam resistant, and highly survivable. Pluracta provides real-time support of combat operations, increasing the flexibility of coordination among airborne and ground units. It increases the geographical extent of control, yet with reduced vulnerability. Pluracta will require no new technology, and it works. Pluracta's broadcast structure is the key to its effectiveness. It is being designed as a general purpose system to be integrated easily with systems currently deployed capable of responding flexibly to a great variety of operating needs. Pluracta, even though still operating with demonstration equipment, has already shown its capability as a surveillance system, providing reasonably accurate track information, position, identity, and status data on its own without massive data processing, radar, or computational backup, an indication of the fundamental change in tactical thinking this system represents. Pluracta distributes air situation information much better than present facilities can. It also acts as an efficient command network, a standby navigational facility, and a friend-foe identification capability. As the new advanced weapons and surveillance systems become available, Pluracta will be ready to support them. By making better use of the technology industry provides, it will help ensure their effectiveness. Pluracta will place reliable, up-to-the-minute information where it belongs, not only at ground elements, but in the cockpit, so that pilots and commanders both can make more reliable moment-by-moment -moment decisions, use their resources, complete their missions. Pluracta is being designed to do the tactical communications job the way it should be done.